Hello students, we are going to see cardinal principles of radiation protection. What is radiation protection? Radiation protection may be defined simply as effective measures employed by radiation workers to safeguard patients, personnel and the general public from unnecessary exposure to ionizing radiation. So this um, radiation protection is um, uh, is carried out by making some regulations and these regulations is um, maintained by standard organi organizations like ICRP and CRP and the role of this radiation regulation is that uh, it is mainly established for the public benefits uh, of radiological protection uh, particularly by providing recommendations and guidance on all aspects of protection against ionizing radiation. So we will just have a basic reviews of what is radiation. Radiation is the emission or transmission of energy in the forms of waves or particles through space or through a material or a medium. So this is uh, some, um, I have mentioned some of the example which is visible light, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, uh, airport security scanners which uses x-rays and then our, th uh, um, our thermal energy so this um, radiation is classified into ionizing and non-ionizing and when we talk about this radiation uh, it is um, electro uh, radiation is an electromagnetic spectrum uh, which consists of electricity and magnetism uh, and uh, they deal with uh, electrically charged particles and interact with each other within the magnetic field so ionizing radiation so we have the uh, ion uh, we have the types of alpha beta x-ray gamma and neutrons so in this uh, diagram i have mentioned about um how they uh, their penetrations how much they can penetrate depending upon the types of ionizing radiation so ionizing radiation we all know that it is a radiation that carries en enough energy to free electrons from atoms or molecules and non-ionizing radiation Non-ionizing radiation is any type of electromagnetic radiation this does, that does not carry enough energy to completely remove an electron from an atoms or molecules. And instead of producing, producing charge icons when passing through matter, the electromagnetic radiation has sufficient energy only for excitation, the movement of an electron to a higher energy states. So different types of ionize, different types of ionizing radiation uh, we will discuss that that much so this types of uh, ionizing radiations can have a biological <clears throat> damage so the mechanism of this biological damage is um, stochastic effect and non stochastic effect so this non stochastic effect we, we also call it deterministic effect and this mechanism of biological damage is that when an ionizing radiation passes through the matter, it, produ it produces positively and negatively charged particles. And this production of these charged particles, which we call it as ions, is the event that may cause injury in normal tissue. These are the sources of radiation exposure. So in the sources of radiation exposure, we have man-made and natural. So this natural is a uh, which we call it um, thorium, example is thorium radium. And uh, uh, natural uh, radiation is a terrestrial radiation, um, cosmic radiation and radionuclides. And man-made uh, radiation is medical x-rays, nuclear medicine, consumer products, nuclear power plant accidents, and nuclear fallout. So the cardinal principles of radiation protection. Uh, being an uh, occupational worker in, radio, in radiology department, diagnostic radiology or nuclear medicine or radiation therapy, 
we are very familiar with these rules which we call it TDS and um, T stands for time and then D stands for distance and S stands for shielding so time is to minimize the amount of time you are in proximity of radiation exposure and distance is to maximize the distance between you occupational worker and source of radiation and shielding we should always use optimal shielding to protect our, uh, ourselves from exposure to radiation so now let's dive into some detailed reasons for this as well as some practical tips regarding shielding time the uh, exposure sh uh, time should be kept minimum increasing ma ma uh, ma and decreasing time and it like we mentioned the amount of radiation received by an individual is directly related to the length of the time that means uh, time is directly proportional to the radiation dose distance distance is between the source and the patient and we should keep maximum distance as much as possible and the national council on radiation protection and measurements report states that all personnel should stand at least two meters away from the x-ray tube and the patient or six feet so in in distance we are following the inverse square law the uh, the inverse square law is the intensity of radiation is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source and when the distance from a source of radiation is doubled the radiation at the new location spans an area four times larger than the original area however the intensity at the new distance is only one fourth the original intensity. Shielding. Shielding implies that certain materials such as concrete or lead will attenuate radiation and uh, because of this attenuation the intensity of the radiation, uh, radiation will decrease and then when uh, they, they will be placed between the source of radiation and the exposed individual. So we, for shielding materials, we use lead. Lead is metal which has the property of blocking or absorb, absorbing, we can say, X-ray radiation due to its high intensity. And uh, hence, lead sheets or shielding are used in the world of radiology for protection from X-rays like we know. And various thickness of pure leads provide different levels of protection. So lead is used as a radiation shielding material as it has a high atomic number. We all know that atomic number of an element is the number of protons in the nucleus, which is equal to the number of electrons around the nucleus. So um, because of its high density, we're using lead. And it is a good choice because any substances that can get in the way of the radiation can soak or absorb it up. And uh, for shielding materials, uh, in KVP, uh, uh, up to 75 at least, we should use 0 0.25 millimeter, millimeter lead thickness. As one millimeter attenuates 99% of the X-ray beam at the same KVP. Four aspects of shielding in diagnostic radiology. We have X-ray tube shielding. We have room shielding. In this room shielding, we have X-ray equipment sh room shielding, patient waiting room shielding, personal shielding, patient shieldings of organs not under investigation means um, the area where we are not supposed to um, exposed, we should provide a shielding. So the first one will be X-ray tube shielding, uh, meaning a source, source shielding, <coughs> shielding towards the X-ray tube. So the X-ray tube housing is lined with thin sheets of lead because of, uh, X-rays produced in the tube are scattered in all directions. The shielding is intended to protect both patients and personnel from leakage radiation. So here, <coughs> 
leakage radiation is transmitted through tube housing so this uh, in this we are using lead for shielding and the spear lead is in met, uh, is in the form of metal it is brittle and cannot be worn as an apparel so this lead this spear lead is in the form of a lead oxide and is mixed with plasticizers or binders to prepare lead shielding or protective shielding from which the protection apparel are prepared the protection provided by this type of sheeting is compared with the pure lead and it is referred to as a lead equivalence. Next, room shielding, structure, uh, which, we, which we also call structural shielding, uh, shielding of the walls, shielding of the floor, of the x-ray room. The lead line walls of radiology department are referred to as protective barriers because they are designed to protect individuals located outside the x-ray room from unwanted radiation. So we have two types of barriers, which is primary barrier and secondary barrier. So primary barrier is parallel to the x-ray source and then secondary barrier is perpendicular to the x-ray source. So primary barrier, the thickness of lead equivalence is 1 by 6, 16 and then secondary barrier is 1 by 32. So, uh, according to Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, in which their purpose is to ensure that radiation worker and public members are not exposed to excess of limit, uh, that means to reduce radiation exposure below limit. So, the walls of the X-ray rooms on which primary X-ray beams falls in uh, should not be less than 35 centimeter or 23 centimeter thick brick and if it is a lead we should use at least uh, 1.7 millimeter lead equivalent so this uh, lead equivalency is uh, defined by american society for testing and materials um, that for radiological protective materials, the thickness in millimeters of lead of greater than 99.9% purity that provides the same attenuation as a given protective material. So that means basically if apparel prepared using any of this lead sheeting uh, is giving a protection from X-ray radiation similar to that provided by a pure lead, then it is said to be having a lead equivalence similar to that of the lead. So let me just give an example out here. Suppose if we use a uh, 0 0.125 millimeter thickness of pure lead sheet and measure the attenuation of 80%, we can use any of the lead shielding prepared by mixing lead powder with binders and provides 80% attenuation then the lead shielding is said to have a lead equivalency of 0 0.125 millimeter lead. Shielding of the X-ray control room. The X-ray control room of an X-ray equipment is a secondary protective barrier which has two important aspects. The wall and viewing window of the control board which should have a lead equivalence of 1.5 mm. The location of control board which should not be located where the primary beam falls directly and the radiation should be scattered twice before entering the boot. So personal shielding. So personal for personal shieldings we have um accessory protective apparels like thyroid shielding lead gloves lead glass lead apron and um it should remain this personal protective gear should remain in the pro uh, radiation environment only when necessary and um they are also classified as a secondary bearer and the minimum Protective lead equivalence in hand gloves and tarot should be 0 0.5 millimeter and in the apron it should be 0 0.25 millimeter. And for lead bearer, the thickness should be either 0 0.5 millimeter or 1.0 millimeter or 1.5 millimeter lead equivalent.
Lastly, patient shielding. So, uh, for patient shielding, we have gonadal shielding, we have uh, breast uh, shielding, we have thyroid shielding, we have lead apron shielding. So, um, the area which is which is apart from the area of interest to be examined, we should provide shielding to the patient in order to do, in order to reduce radiation dose. Thank you.